Hey everyone, welcome back to Upside Down Data. So we got a request recently to talk about Theta and I figured I'd go ahead and give an update about that since we haven't talked about Theta that much recently. So if you're not familiar with Theta, it's trying to be a decentralized video streaming service. So think about something like Twitch, you know, Theta is trying to be a decentralized version of something like that. And when you look at the Theta price chart, so here I'm showing you our upside downside potential indicator UDPI. This is the price action of Theta color coded to our risk model here. So, you know, uh, high, uh, high numbers, you know, red values here are high risk, low values, green values are low risk. And you see it's done a good job of quantifying risk for Theta throughout its lifespan. Now, the thing about Theta that's interesting is it had this huge, massive run up really into the spring of 21. And then ever since then, it's really kind of just been down only more or less. You know, it had, you know, a dip and then a rally out into the summer, but it didn't do what some other altcoins did where, you know, a number of other altcoins went and put up all time highs back coming off of the summer, you know, back in, in October, November of last year. Theta really didn't do that. It's been more or less just in a downtrend ever since. So I think the question that a lot of people probably have is, all right, when might we expect, you know, the downside potential to get start getting exhausted when might be that low point. So from the upside downside potential indicators perspective, we have gotten to quite a bit lower risk level. We can see this if we just look at the raw values of the model. So this is, again, the long term risks so that care about moves to play out over um, months to uh, years. So kind of longer in its focus. And you can see that we're back all the way back down to the lowest kind of general levels of risk uh, below negative four. So we've only been lower than that once coming off of the March 2020 crash. And now we're back there again. So obviously, you know, historically speaking, when it gets down to these kind of general points around negative four, those have been quite advantageous buying opportunities for Theta. But of course, the thing that we have to keep in mind with something like Theta is just because it went on this crazy rip in the past doesn't mean it'll necessarily do that again. So that's where I think people's thesis about Theta, their fundamental assessment, you know, do you think that Theta is an asset that will ultimately thrive and gain a lot of market share? If that's what you believe, then, you know, there might be every reason to expect that it can go ripping to the upside once again. If that is more of a question in your mind, then, you know, even though we're at these kind of lower risk levels, we're just coming out of that, doesn't necessarily guarantee that Theta is going to necessarily be at this generational buying opportunity. And that's just internal to Theta. We have to also think about how the broader crypto markets might act. If we go into a next leg down the bear market, you know, Theta probably is not going to do all that well. So it's something to keep in mind when you're looking at this, that, you know, when you're looking at risk levels, it's all in the context of your broader thesis. You know, do you think it's ultimately the asset is ultimately going to trend up with time? And then what risk is really going to tell you is kind of in that broader kind of appreciation and price the asset might see. Something like, for example, Bitcoin, when are the good times to be acquiring and distributing within those broader cycles? So if you think that Theta will go on to put up new all time highs, you know, we're basically at levels that are generational buying opportunities. Now, risk has been rising to some degree. So as we've kind of been bear flagging here, you know, coming off and kind of going sideways, the, the model does see a heightened risk coming in. It's seeing greater downside potential becoming plausible, more, more and more plausible the longer we kind of stay doing this, this bear flagging here. But we're still quite low risk, right? We're still below negative two. And so um, certainly, you know, in the past coming off of these levels, there have been nice returns. If the model or if the crypto market were to rally and Theta were to decide to join in, there'd be plenty of upside that would be reasonable from the model's estimation. But again, nothing guaranteeing that we have to go ripping to the upside anytime soon, even though we were just at this really low level of risk. Because again, usually when we do that, even if we rally out of those low levels of risk, usually there's some pullbacks that'll happen along the way. You know, you're probably not going to be going and setting an old new, new all time high immediately or anything like that. I think that'd be asking quite a lot of Theta at this point. So that's one way that we can look at Theta's price action is look at what our risk indicator thinks. And that's kind of the more macro perspective of that model, the, the long-term version. I want to flip over to a different model we have here on the channel, which is the market direction classifier, which tries to identify broader trends in an asset. And so this is the MDC for Theta. So if you're not familiar with this model, it basically looks at the asset's uh, price action and then generates a critical value at which it thinks if the asset's above that level, it's bullish, if it's below that level, then it's bearish. And what you can see with the MDC is that, you know, it generally speaking will get you in fairly early on, um, on uptrends and get you out fairly early on downtrends. So you're trying to basically, you'll miss most of the down and you'll be able to sit in for a good chunk of the gain or 
an exceptionally high amount of the gain. You know, for example, you would have been trading based on the MDC coming out of March 2020. Just look at this um, this rip that you would have been getting into all the way back out here, and then getting out right here, right around the top. And then also it would have been keeping you out for most of this downtrend. And even if you would have, you know, for example, been buying in these kind of short-term uplifts, you know, uplifts here, and then selling it when it dipped below, you wouldn't have really been losing much. That's one of the things I really like about the MDC is it can help to kind of manage risk. That gives you this line in the sand, this critical level to watch. The asset loses it, then that's, you know, potentially a problem. That might mean that a downtrend is coming, which might mean that de-risking is reasonable. But if you flip above it, that might mean that a bet is reasonable as well. Because again, even if it ends up being a short-term thing or kind of a fake out, again, if you just get out when it flips red, you're not really losing much at all. So not financial advice, not saying you should trade on the MDC, but if one were to do it, I think there are some strategies one could employ that could help them, you know, get in for these up these upsides and then stay out for these really nasty downsides. So that's the MDC. We just flipped green. You know, that's that's good. You know, this is basically the model thinks that we're in more of an uptrend now than a downtrend. So it thinks a bullish disposition on um, theta is reasonable here. So that's what it's saying. So that combined with the risk level means that we do certainly have room to run should broader market conditions allow. All right, so now let's turn over to the momentum bias indicator. So this is an indicator that tries to document the amount of bias that's in an asset at a given point in time. So basically, if you're in the green, that means that there's a positive momentum bias where any kind of moves to the downside are quickly reversed and then the uptrend continues. So that's bull market behavior, spending a lot of time in the green is characteristic of bull markets. Spending a lot of time in the red is characteristic of bear markets, and that's what we've really been in recently. Now, you'll notice we've just popped our head back up above zero, which is the average level of momentum in the, in the market and then these are standard deviations so one standard deviation above and below just popped our head above zero and so what we'd like to see here is not something like this play out again where we just poke our head up and then get quickly rejected to the downside we'd like to see something more like this start to play out where we can spend a lot more time up in the green and then maybe some some oscillation around zero one of the things i've talked about before this indicator is this oscillation around zero kind of tends to precede these big parabolic moves to the upside and then ultimately, once we get into that big parabola, then we'll be, we would be spending a lot more time in the green than in the red. So should theta be able to start rallying again, you know, we'd want to start seeing this kind of behavior probably first, and then transition into this. If we see this kind of behavior again, we pop up and get rejected back down. I would see that as a bearish sign, which might mean that theta has to spend more time in a bear market before any upside is possible. So if we put these indicators together, what I'm seeing here is that, you know, Obviously, assuming one has an, as a bullish outlook on theta in the long term, because obviously if one thinks theta is ultimately going to zero, you're probably just not really going to care too much about anything that's going on here um, too much. But if one does think that theta is likely to keep on increasing um, in value over time, you know, in the long term UDPI's perspective, there's plenty of room to move to the upside. We've just crested up into a potential new uptrend. And, you know, that very, and the, the MBI is also uh, agreeing that we're entering into a possible, um, you know, upside momentum regime if we can hold it, if we don't just get it immediately rejected back down. So I think theta is one that's going to be interesting to watch over the coming months. You know, it very well could turn into a rally that might take it back up to some of these higher levels. You know, for example, maybe we even rally up to resistance up at this general price level. We'll have to wait and see. But it's one that I'm certainly going to keep an eye on. And I'll be watching these indicators to see if they maintain a bullish outlook or if they start flipping bearish, you know, if we roll over on the MBI, if we lose the critical level on the MDC, for example, that's where I'd start to get concerned. All right, if you like the content, remember to subscribe to the channel, give the video a like and follow us on Twitter. A lot of updates that are in.